Okay, well, welcome to Outside the Box. I know we normally have uh, uh, an intro here, but unfortunately I cannot get the blog. I got the blog talk board opened. I don't even know if you guys are hearing me or not, <laughs> but I got the board opened, and I did bring Santo in, but um, not there. I guess I'll have to see what's going on there. I don't even know if I'm on the air right now, so there you go. I'm going to keep trying to get... Uh, uh, the blog talk page up my studio I can't see it I got it up to get called in but I can't see it from that point forward so I'm running a bit blind and I uh, can't <laughs> I can't bring anybody into the call oh uh, anyway it's all good it's all good so I haven't got a freaking clue what I'm going to talk about tonight um, out and about doing the uh, uh, cross Canada tour I guess <laughs> anyway um yeah, so just uh, bear with me, guys. I'm trying. Oh, there's Santos. Let me see. Okay, can hear. Okay, thank you. Yes, Santo, I'd love to have you in. It's always nice to have someone to talk to. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and Christopher. Um, okay, thanks, uh, Christopher. So <laughs> I may end up having to hand over the board to you. Uh, it, if anything happens, there's no way I can get back. So there you go. Hello, Santo. How are you? Great, um, fantastic, Kate. Yourself? Good, good. Wow, at least I got I got here, so that's a that's a pretty good thing. I'm looking at a white screen right now. Uh, apparently, the web page is not available for Blog Talk. Isn't that a funny thing? So, um, yeah, hot on the heels of yesterday. I'm not even sure uh, where to begin tonight, but I think. Um, well, we've got the game. There's no question. That's the one thing that I'm finding. I think maybe we can... Uh, I, I would like to focus a bit on, on the astrotheology tonight, if that's cool with you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got I've got stuff to, um, <laughs> to get out for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because, I mean, that's been one of the main thrusts of the conversations we've been having here today, in that... Um, oh, there we go. Sorry, I'm just uh, setting up here, guys. Uh in terms of getting people out of the um, literal. And it, it is a common thing that I come across with everybody, and, and I know what it is. It's, it, it's the program. And i got to tell you, once you can see the program operating uh, from a completely neutral position, everything makes sense. And there, there is no way you can put this in in perspective. There's just no way. Uh, you have to, you just have to see it. So the best thing, and I've been talking about this a lot today. The best thing people can do is, is to start looking at their own roadmaps. And the roadmap begins with the point of entry. All right. If the birth certificate starts at that time, so does your game plan. And if you don't know where you're going or, or where you came from, how the hell do you know where you're going? And we have a lot of people. Uh, walking around on this planet without any roadmaps, and they're just going blindly through life, following along based on the system's rules and indoctrinations, uh, being good little slaves, and uh, throwing their hands up in the air, thinking they can't do anything about it, when in fact they're God, I know, because they're me. So this is why I am so glad to to be walking lockstep with you, because you bring that roadmap to people for them to see it. And... Once they can get a handle on it, this is for me the, the the zodiac was it wasn't the beginning of the yellow brick road as far as me seeing what my role was, but what that came in another way. But what it did was it confirmed everything and clarified it all. It made sense of it all, where everything made sense. And it's no wonder that the churches have spent so much time and all the systems of eliminating any concept of the holy science, uh, especially in schools. I mean, uh, they certainly don't want anyone learning about themselves. So um, with that in mind, where do you want to go? Well, you mentioned the Zodiac. You know, we should start always with the Zodiac. Everything starts with the Zodiac. Everything starts with the 12 on the ecliptic. And um, there are there are sacred numbers <coughs> in theology, and those are twelve and seven. Twelve is mind; seven is matter. And seven, the septenary, we call an octave, and the dozen, we also round off to thirteen. And thirteen and eight are Fibonacci numbers. Twelve and seven sit just below them. Just as the next Fibonacci number, 5, um, below it sits the number 4, 
which is the number of um, the physical universe. There are four physical fountains or rivers out of the Garden of Eden. So you see 5, 8 and 13 in the Fibonacci sequence and 4, 7 and 12 that sit just below them. And those three are the sacred numbers in Scripture. Uh, the four has to do with the uh, tetragrammaton and... Um, <coughs> You did mention Aton at the end of that yesterday. Yes, it is all about Aton, the original. But uh, it has to do with the tetra, the four rivers of matter, or well, physical creation, you see, because matter is seven and twelve is, is um, mind. But the mind comes from the, um, the dodecahedron universe we live in. It is a dodecahedron. And... Um, also, the um, the signature uh, element of the universe being carbon, and in particular the isotope carbon-12. This is where all 12-ness comes from. Um, we 99% of carbon is that isotope. 90, no, sorry, 99% of all the carbon in the universe is that isotope, carbon-12, which is 666 really. Six neutrons, six protons, and six electrons. Now, which gives us um, basically the um, the word for Ra, the, the 18th letter in the al English alphabet, 666, and L is the 12th letter in the alphabet. So you've got 6 plus 6 for L, and 6 plus 6 plus 6 for Ra. And <clears throat> And so carbon-12 is really the fourth most abundant element in the universe. Um, and it uh, comes in the series, uh, fourth in the series of um, uh, hydrogen, helium, oxygen. Those are the three most abundant gases. But carbon is the structure. It's a carbon crystal. It's a diamond crystal. Hiding in the word diamond is the word atom. At dom. Dom is diamond. And that's much clearer in, in Italian. Um, Adam is adamo, diamante, <laughs> a diamond. Or uh, the amo in the end of adamo is amore, uh, the creature that is loving. Because... Once we transmute the carbon-12 to carbon-7, um, we now have a, a carbon in our body which is able to, um, you know, well, it's theurgic. It's the theurgic element. This is how we transmute our lead into gold. We change that carbon-12 into carbon-7. Carbon-7 is nothing but um, six electrons, six protons, and one neutron. Now, I don't know how they get all these protons and electrons and neutrons, because this is all just, just a crock, really, according to Walter Russ Russell. These are just measurements of vibrations. That's all the elements are. But apparently, this 666 structure in carbon was known to the ancients, because it's basically the hex. You look at your honeycombs. You look at the rings at the, um, the North Pole of Saturn. You look at snowflakes. Um cellular structures, it, it, you know, even the DNA, there's the helix, um, uh, sorry, there's the um, hexagonal bonds and the um, pentagonal, right? So hex is, is everywhere. And so, and so this is how the universe structures its mind through carbon. It's a crystal. And that's why Adam Cadmon, Adam the diamond creature, is a crystal creature. And we are carbon-12 crystal creatures, a special um, Adam Cadmon model. We are now entering the, or have entered, the fifth Adam. Um, the fourth Adam was the most fallen of all Adams. You see, the... Uh, <clears throat> Oh well, I won't get into that. But but basically, what what we're doing is we have inherited the fifth atom now, and that's the quintessential atom. 
the quintessential being. We've gone through all the falls. We've gone through the golden and silver and, and bronze and iron ages. We've done that. We have absolutely done that. And, you know, we, we acquired more and more solid and heavier bones uh, and heavier matter and coarser bodies as we have fallen each fall. But now we are going to be transformed. <laughs> And um, this can only occur once we all, you know, um, once the um, the elect have been uh, rounded up, so to speak, and numbered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Jehovah's Witnesses are uh, their elect are, are dwindling in numbers. I believe the anointed ones are only about seven thousand in number now. Um, there was only 35,000 of them in, in 1935 <laughs> when they separated the great crowd from the other sheep. Uh, sorry, the, um, the elect from the other sheep. And um, this crowd has been dwindling ever since. You know, I did my figures uh, on that and they should have dwindled in about 1960. I don't know how <laughs> a, new, uh, a new mob keeps turning up, but... Uh, apparently, the, the 144,000 have been chosen and numbered according to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, money has been backed, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, keep going. Keep going. This is funny. Yeah. So, so we see that everything reverts back back to this number 12. It's it's the cosmic number. It is the it's imprinted in the universe. It's really basically 666, the mark of the beast. And, you know, on the lower level, it represents everything that is nasty. But on the higher levels, it's how everything gets done. Everything gets done this way. Everything travels along an ecliptic. It begins at zero point, March the 21st. We've even got a name for it. And March is in relation to Mars. Because Mars is the ruler of the first part of the ecliptic, always. Wherever you go, in every fractal, in every cosm, whether it's the macro, the meso, or the microcosm. And there's always light travelling on an ecliptic. Just as our Son, Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, in the, in the heavens, Helios, tells us every March the 21st, when he begins at right ascension of Meridian, ran backwards for Mars. And so... And Mars is basically just the waters, maritime, you know, but Mars is also the waters above and the waters below. They're always, um, they're always around. There's always two waters. I mean, you know, when you look at water on the ocean, what colour is it? Blue. When you look at the sky, what colour is it? Blue. So the air is blue, the water is blue. <laughs> and, and so it's the waters above and the waters below. <laughs> And so, this is how God made the universe with these two waters. Basically, it's the waters above are fire, and the waters below are water. But it's all hydrogen. Hydrogen is flammable, but when it mixes with um, oxygen, H2O, it flips polarity and becomes feminine. And so, you've got feminine water from two masculine um, elements so-called masculine, of course, <laughs> uh, oxygen and, um, and hydrogen, water. And so this is what's happening. The higher elements or the more spiritual ones have to do with gases or fires, air or fire, and the polarized ones that have flipped into matter, i.e. water and earth, um, these are feminine. And these are the four rivers, you see. These are the four rivers of the Garden of Eden. And, and this number four, the Tetragrammaton, works with the Sept, seven, Septenary, Set, Saturn. And it works with the twelve, the twelve um, points of uh, consciousness along the ecliptic. There are twelve central suns along the ecliptic. And they all have a different um, <clears throat> vibration and a different element. This is why there's there's um, four elements along the ecliptic. Aries is fire, then Taurus is earth, Gemini is air, Cancer is water. And this is repeated twi two more times. And so you have um, 
all the elements are represented three times, but they change in their modality. They also have cardinal, fixed and mutable mo modalities. So obviously the fixed ones represent the true, true uh, essence of the element. So Taurus represents Earth truly. Uh, Leo represents fire truly as it is, fixed. And not in its, its birth stage, which is cardinal. It is in its growth stage, which is what is, you know, representative of its pure nature. And then mutable, of course, is the destructive part. Everything is born, grows, and decays. This is what God stands for. Generation, operation, dis um, well, dissolution, or you can have degeneration there. But generation is everything... So everything has three phases, therefore all the elements should have three phases. Of course, fire should be cardinal. There should be a, a, an opening point of fire, a beginning point where everything emanates because that's what fire does. It's the, the movement principle in the universe. Earth is the, um, the uh, still principle, everything that is still in the universe. So you've got fire generating everything, all forms, all movement comes from fire. So this is why the ecliptic begins at Aries, Agnes, Ignite, Agnes, Igneous, the fire. Everything generates with fire. And on the ecliptic, there you have the, the perfect element to start everything off, fire. Hence, Aries is the one and only true place to begin all your astrology, all your everything you ever do begins in Aries. <laughs> Don't be like these um, these so-called, you know. There's there's some. I do have some um, astrological uh, books that were written by Christians that are trying to uh, trying to bring the Maseroth into Christianity by teaching that everything begins in Virgo. <laughs> Funnily enough, they begin in Virgo and then they go around the ecliptic that way. And uh, they're trying to reclaim the zodiac for Christianity. It's a bit like these um, Christian rock bands, you know. Yeah, <laughs> they kind of make you... Yeah, sort of. Um, it's, it's oxymoronic, is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's it's vomitous. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's a, the, yeah, I was trying to use a nice word. Uh, how about very pukey? Uh, yeah, it's all good. Vomitous works. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Uh, but um, the 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 point is, because they can't run away from this science of the ecliptic that all gospels are in the sky, and hence all their literature is written about this. What the ecliptic does, but they're too dumb to realise, of course. Uh, so. What they're um, actually <clears throat> looking at is how the light works. Light always is ignited at Agnes. Aries. <laughs> uh, hmm. imagine, and, imagine that. <laughs> yeah. And then we have... And <laughs> Imagine that. It all makes sense, you see, because all the elements that follow... Um, Bonatti, the 13th century astrologer, was very clever. He always... He always started at Aries and then told a story. And everything he does, he starts at Aries and then tells the story, just as much, just exactly as his pretty much namesake Bonacci today does. <laughs> hmm, interesting about that. And how about Bill Donna Huey? <laughs> what is it with you guys? You're all telling the same story, you know? It's, it's friggin' awesome. <laughs> yeah. There's only one story. Yep. Oh, by, by the way, isn't Virgo the sixth sign? Yeah, yeah, the hex. Okay, keep going. That's uh, just you know. Let's let's keep everybody analyzing. Let's start at the analyzing. The, screw the I am. Let's just get to analyzing. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. I get it. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, the the point the point I was trying to get at with Bonatti. Um, I'll I'll see if I can grab some beautiful parts from Bonatti because the guy is just rock and rolling the hottest astrologer. Ever and he was condemned by um, Dante, tongue in cheek, of course, because Dante condemned um, 
the other Bon, Boniface the Eighth, the uh, Unum Sanctum Boniface. He condemned that Bon to uh, hell, and his other contemporary uh, Bonatti, the astrologer, tongue in cheek, because of course um, Dante wrote in other literature his um, appraisal of astrology, because of course <laughs> if you're going to condemn <laughs> astrology, you're going to look like a dunce in history. <laughs> you know, you you really will go down as just that, just a dunce, really. Um, so, so, but what he said was that. Um, Along the ecliptic is um, first is Aries, and then he says, "Why the bull? Um, isn't this strange that an Earth sign should turn up immediately after Aries when you would expect an air sign, since fire, air, water, Earth is the natural sequence of the vibration of all the elements? What is Earth doing as the second sign at um, two hours um, at one hour and fifty nine minutes right ascension of meridian?" What is it doing right there after fire? Well, he's, well, he says fire generates, uh, earth stabilizes. You see, remember we, we're talking about God here. Generation, operation, dissolution. Yeah, earth operates. It stabilizes things. Then comes air, and air degenerates, and then comes water, and water destroys. Hence, he said, it's perfect what the ecliptic is doing. It is generating, operating, and destroying in three or four phases, depending how you look at it. Whether you look at it in the modalities, cardinal fixed mutable, or whether you look at it as the elements at, and what they actually do. Fire actually does generate. Hence, it will always be followed by elements in sequence that... that, um, that um, carry the natural the natural rhythm of vibration you can't have water immediately after fire because that's destructive and you can't have um, generation followed by destruction you've got to have operation in the middle hence water and fire will be separated by the two um, patients of nature earth and water uh, sorry earth and air because fire and water are the two agents of nature. Earth and air are the two patients of nature, explains Bonatti. Then he goes on to say, um, <clears throat> why, uh, why the deno on page 41 of, of his uh, basic astrology, he says, why the denomination of the signs begins from Aries, and why not any of the other signs? It was stated in the preceding chapter why the signs were so ordered. Indeed, in this one, it must be stated why the denomination begins from Aries and not from any other of the signs. When the heaven is a spherical body and everything spherical lacks a beginning, and what lacks a beginning lacks an end, and what lacks a beginning and end lacks a middle center, this being excluded in bodily things. The reasons are many, of which one is that the denomination of the signs begins from Aries because the circle of the signs intersects the circles of the equator by day at the beginning of Aries. And in its opposite, not at a right angle, but obliquely, so that six signs are northern and six southern, just as will be stated at length elsewhere. So, exactly how I do the sine wave, <laughs> as should be done, um, you place Aries there at the ascension, at the ascending point in the east, uh, where astrology has the ascendant. And then you climb up to the MC, and then you go toward the DC, and that's Aries through Virgo along there. And so what he's saying here is that the circle of the signs intersects the circle of the equator by, of the day at the beginning of Aries. Yeah, that's the ecliptic, <laughs> the equator on March the 21st. So the ecliptic there and the circle around the Earth intersect each other at March the 21st. And so that is the beginning point. It has to be the beginning point. <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a question uh, or more of a, a concept. I, I just want to get your opinion on it because you're one of the few I think could ever uh, at least go with, go with this idea. Krishna. How was Krishna killed? He was shot through the heel by an arrow. 
That's how he was crucified. So that to me is symbolic of Pisces. So I'm thinking back to when um, I have to do a little little homework on it. Um, I think Krishna was around ten thousand years ago. So the reason why I'm asking this is because in the in, in this age that we came out of well, came out of Pisces, Jesus was crucified on the cross, or Krishna was on the cross, of course, the sun traveling through the southern cross, yes? Yep. Okay, yep. so just keep, I just want to make sure I'm getting the things right here. Okay, so I'm wondering, given the age that the Krishna story came about, what the ecliptic was then, and what the sun was traveling through, because as, as Bill Donahue so aptly put it, if we were in the age of Taurus, then the Christ would be, say, gored to death by a bull. Do you see where I'm going here? The, just the idea? I, I'm just looking at a misplaced ecliptic to see where we where we are in the universe. Never mind just in the in, in, in the um, zodiac scale of the galactic. You know. Anyway, I just wanted I wanted to put that idea out there because it, it's I've been pondering it since you know discovering that Krishna was killed or crucified. Uh, with an arrow through his heel, the Achilles heel, right? And, of course, symbolic of Pisces. So I'm going to look at that and see what time zone, it, uh, like what part of the age we were in when that occurred, to see what happened and what the next crucifixion is going to be. Kind of get a head up on the game, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's that's what's um, happening now. We are in the crucifixion of uh, Pegasus, the white horse. Um, Pegasus takes us on his wings in the age of Aquarius. Uh, Jesus was always going to come and save us on a white horse. I mean, well, there it is. You know, um, they always, they always, it's always the ecliptic which dictates, you know, how the hero is going to manifest on the earthly plane. This is why whoever. Whoever the historical Jesus was, and I've, I've dealt with this in my presentations, you know, for those that insist that there has to be a historical Jesus, you know, and some of those are, you know, the likes of Yogananda, Paramhansa Yogananda, Rudolf Steiner, and a lot of other theosophists and, um, you know, a lot of other great, um, well-researched people that have insisted that Jesus be taken also literally. Well, if we're going to... Um, you know, go back and look and find a Jesus that fits the, um, you know, the perfect uh, hero, pharaonic um, uh, saviour, if you like. All you have to do is you have to go to the Essene community, um, you know, probably around about 100 years before as um, George, um, what's his name, George Mead um, wrote 100 years ago that... Um, the Jesus Ben Pandera that, you know, was so illumined and went down to Egypt and was initiated and et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, this was... The Essene community were churning out some very, very, very fine teachers. And this is why eventually Rome uh, had to come down hard on Jerusalem because they were actually uh, churning out Jesus by the dozens. It was a Jesus school, um, you know, veritable and, and proper, <laughs> the Essene. That's what Essene means. Essa means Jesus. <laughs> Hello, uh, Essa, the Essenes of Jerusalem, that, that sect that they don't like to mention. They like to mention the Sadducees and the Pharisees, but they always neglect the Essenes because Essa is Jesus. That's his name. That's how they say his name. <laughs> so the Essenes were churning out Jesuses and, you know, the um and uh, these were the the new model of the Christ being of the Piscean age. And they had Jupiterian um Christ like features. Jupiter had returned two thousand years ago when Pisces um entered the ecliptic in the processional um, year, the Platonic year, and people were so rejoicing on planet Earth because we just came out of Mars, Aries, and you know all of that uh, ram's horn, so far blowing, killing, and warlike stuff happened in in um, in Aries, and all of those um, 
empires. Mars, uh, sorry, Rome actually was founded in the heart of Aries, you know, uh, 2,700 years ago, they say. Of course, and, and that's why Mars is the hero of Rome. The, the, um, the protector god of, the patron god of Rome is Mars. Mars backward is Ra Ram, which is Rome. And so Rome has always been martial and maritime, maritime in its laws and martial in its character. And they ram it up here too, Rome and all of its rams. And so what we're dealing with is we're dealing with the theology that is scripted as the ecliptic goes. So now we're in the age of Saturn, the crown, and we should be in the crown chakra. We should be enlightened. We should know all things. Because of the Jupiterian waters, although Jupiter is, is the prince of peace, you know, Jupiter Zeus, Jesus, um, he's, he's nothing like his brother Saturn. Uh, Saturn really is the true liberator. Saturn is, is the one that has all the goods. None of the planets are good or evil. Don't get trapped in this illusion. Even though I call, them, I call Satan the greater malefic and Mars the lesser malefic and Jupiter and uh, Venus the greater and lesser benefics, respectively, um, it's got nothing to do with, um, you know, because the curses of Jupiter are worse than the curses of Saturn, in my opinion. I've seen him do nastier things in people's charts than Saturn can ever do. So, you know, it's, they're all good and bad because they are just the demiurge playing in with electric light, which is positive and negative. So they have to be, both, all planets have to be both good and bad. No one is good except my Father who art in heaven, said Jesus the Son. So yeah. what we've... Yeah, go I, was just, I was just going to ask you there, um, going back to Krishna again, and a great uh, comment from Michael I want to share with you, because I don't know, I'm going to ask you. Um, now, the Christian story, he was crucified through the ankle, yet all of the preceding story uh, is identical to the Jesus story. The only difference was how he was crucified. So that to me tells me, allegorically, that yes, all the same planets were involved, yet we were in a different place in uh, space, if you will. Uh, you know, ten, say 10,000 years ago, uh, we were not looking at the same heavens. They have changed, right, as we go through the, uh, uh, the ecliptic or the, what do you call that? Uh, did I get that right? Not the ecliptic, that's the planets, the, um, uh, the galactic Galactic plane? A galactic plane, yeah, with regards to the zodiac, because we go in a processional uh, as we go through through the the as above to our normal order as below, like Aries, Taurus, Gemini, on in in our time and in the galactic, it is um, backwards. Backwards, Gemini, Taurus, <laughs> Aries, right? Yeah. So, yep. what I'm the point I'm getting at here is yes, all the planets would all be the be in the solar system, and we'd come up to that awakening age of knowing all of this information that we're sharing, and the allegory was written down for Krishna. I'm just curious as to what age Krishna was actually in, where the Piscean uh, aspect of getting killed through the heel w w came into effect. Now, here, here I, I, I'm not really sure how I can try to describe this. It's, it's still downloading and formulating, but I know there's something there because I'm seeing the correlations. But here, here was a question from Michael. Uh, wasn't the white horse at one time the sign for cancer before the sign for cancer became a crab? Okay. Monoceros. Monoceros. There you go. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Great. I, I just learned that. I did not know that. And also, yeah. uh, Pegasus, by the way, because Pegasus is a, is a child of Poseidon, is a seahorse, the hippocampus, right? So that's the representation of the hippocampus, uh, which is sea, uh, a seahorse. Yep. That's right. That's right. As above, so below. In the body, these are all organs, and you've got to know. <laughs> well. You will know, you, not you've got to know, you will know all the organs and their respective correspondences up, upstairs. This is what I, I specialize in with my, um, you know, my syncretic astrology. It's just, um, it's purely the science of as above, so below. In a very, very scientific, to the degree, second and minute of every degree, you know, we can um, get accuracy with this science. It is, and, and it, you know, for those idiots who... <laughs> 
who uh, are happy to, in their ignorance, uh, denounce astrology because it's not empirical. It absolutely is freaking empirical. Better than any other um, nuclear science that you've got on the planet is perfectly empirical you know everything is um everything is proven by astrology and um everything can be proven by astrology there's nothing there's nothing that can't be ascertained through the stars uh so the other reason why bonatti talks about um the, why aries the beginning he says another reason is because when the sun enters aries the day then begins to be increased over the night well that's pretty simple that's kindergarten stuff when, since increase is a noble thing, the sages of this art were agreed that the denomination of the signs would have to begin from the sign in which the increase begins. Another reason why the denomination of the signs begins from Aries is because since the four qualities, <coughs> which are hotness and coldness, dryness and moisture, are simple, and since they are simple, they do not increase, nor do they diminish, but when they are put together, namely hotness and moisture, coldness and dryness, now certain ones of them signify an effect and increase, others of them signify corruption and de decrease. Whence it ought to have begun from Aries more so than from any other of the signs, because when the sun enters Aries, then things begin to be affected and increased. And since effect and increase are noble things and friends of nature and defect and de defect and decrease are ignoble things and enemies of nature the denomination ought to have begun more deservedly from aries because then things grow tender the which quality is likened to youth which is the most powerful part of life and so it is the most powerful part of time when the aforesaid came to be, because the sun recedes from the equator of the day and approaches the northern region, regions, and heat acts on the moisture which has existed from the preceding winter season, and nature is moved then to generation and the increase of things, and herbs grow, and trees bear foliage, and flower and produce fruits, and many seeds germinate. This does not happen in any other season of the year, unless perhaps sometimes fortuitously. Therefore, the denomination of the signs had to begin more deservedly from Aries than from any other sign. Now, this guy rocks, you know, he knows his signs. He knows the ecliptic. He always begins at Aries, you know, uh, as the Egyptians did. Uh, that, was their, that was their beginning of the, uh, the ecliptic, even though they started their year in, in June, like the Romans started their year in January. Nonetheless, Everyone always started their year on March the 21st in the um, in the spiritual anagogical um, uh, life. It, it has never disappeared. That fact has never ever been eradicated from history. Even though you know Rome tried to, they really really tried to dumb this science down. You know, really really dumbed it down, so that even if there was a, a, a literal Saviour Jesus Christ, a man. You know, we were reduced to having to worship him instead of becoming, you know, ourselves a Christ with and transmuting our carbon twelve into carbon seven, which is a spiritual element. You know, it has the ability, like iron, has the ability to ha create a magnetic field around it. So has carbon seven, the ability to attract um, akashic and spiritual theurgic energies. You know, and theurgy is the yoga of the West. We've forgotten this. You know, we we turn to the East for yoga, but uh, we need to <laughs> we need to take a step back to um, good old West and practice theurgy. And uh, none other better than um, Proclus and Iamblichus, who taught theurgy and its um, its most um, sublime teachings. And this. Theurgy is the result is henosis or oneness with the divinity, and this is where you recognise that you are identical with God, not separate, identical with God, separate in flesh. Yes, for God does not die, but immaculately, immaculately conceived nonetheless. And so, the earth must see 
corruption, but the spirit does not. It never sees corruption. So we never we are always living on a plane so high that we never actually witness corruption. Um, we are never corrupted in our souls, and this is why some of us are stronger than others. You know, some of us are more co courageous than others because of this pure connect um, and knowing who you are. This is why I always stress know who you are because I didn't have any kind of power myself um, of any kind of command over you know addictions or any other thing in my life unless until I knew who I was and realized that I was one with this <clears throat> this eternal spirit this flame that uh, that is me the I am and so when people deny that and they accept um, theories uh, like the Darwinian version of um, of evolution rather than the true version uh, which would probably, you know, Walter Russell would probably um, uh, be the best person that I can reference for the true version of, you know, um, causal evolution that has been taking place. What is occurring is that that it is it is the causal spiritual um, blueprints in seeds that are projected from stars that. Um, that cause the evolution of beings you see and these and these creative days that the bible speaks about you see the first creative day was under the rule of the uh, archangels and um and uh, the lords of saturn and then the second that day was called um that was the polarian period polarian uh, and then after this great day, um, the earth was still in the sun's nebula in the first creative day. Then the second creative day is the Hyperborean period, ruled by the lords of the sun. And then at the end of this day, the earth is expelled from the sun's um, you know, nebula, and it is its own entity. And Adam Edmond, with pineal gland and all... Um, you know, n um, very fully developed being proceeds from then, and then the next great creative day is the lunar day called the Lemurian period, which then gave birth to the Atlantean. But the Lemurian, the moon period, um, this is where we developed our full our nervous system, and we are the Adam Cadmon that we are now, the race of special Christic beings. And this is why <coughs> Saturn is always followed by Sunday, Sat Saturn Day, followed by Sunday, followed by Monday. You know, and we've gone past these creative days now. But um, the Polarian, the Hyperborean and the Lemurian periods were all part of our development. And then in the later Atlant uh, Lemurian and toward the Atlantean period, we had our you know, um, the full um, set of um, cerebrospinal system and we were the full package, you see. And so we have, um, we have come from a great, great creative force in the centre of the sun. And so everything, everything returns. We've gone from the mineral through the animal through the plant and then now we're in the middle kingdom. The human kingdom is is the middle. It's known as the middle. We've gone, you know. Well, well here, this is. I'm going to jump in here because uh, great point from Daniel, by the way. Um, just, and I think I can answer this, and I just want to get your thoughts on it. And this is one of the things for me looking at this duality. And you know, when we talk about like in um, uh, astrotheology, theology, we go around the wheel: Aries, I am; Taurus, I have; Gemini, I think; etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's only one half of the story. That's only the positive, right? So what uh, the comment that Daniel made was um, that basically what what's being shared with astro theology only applies in the northern hemisphere about Aries, and it also it's, it only applies about Taurus and Gemini and all the rest of it. So for me, I had to look at it from the duality aspect of positive and negative, and of course, negative is always deemed feminine, right? So here it is. As above, we have the I am, Aries. As below, we have the I am not, 
right? Uh, with Taurus, we have in the uh, for the as above, I have. As below, I have not. So that that's how, when I looked at, um, this was a major thing for me in terms of figuring myself out with Gemini, uh, being that the, the motto is, I think. So that's easy for me. That's what I do. So what I had to learn to do was not think. Turn off the left brain, turn off the monkey chatter. So I, I was maybe get you to feel that out a little bit in terms of the as above in that areas. Yeah, we can talk about the astrotheological cycles uh, from a strictly northern hemisphere viewpoint, which is what we talk about. But I, I just wanted to throw that little uh, mirror in for the as below because you know we have to in the northern hemisphere. If we look at the Earth the way we do with North America, South America, the Earth is turning in a counterclockwise, masculine direction. But when you get below the the equator and you look up from the south pole, it is turning in a clockwise. So for me, half the equation was left out. We only had the positive. I had to bring in the negative to, to, to complete that sine wave. because, uh, And you do this so eloquently with the sine wave. Uh, with every sine wave, there is a top and a bottom, or two sides to every every wave. And when the, when the wave is riding up, you've got a high positive, but you've also created a high negative, which for me is creative potential within the negative womb. Right? So, uh, and I'm going to explore this a bit further. This is still stuff that's been downloading over the last day or two uh, for a bigger picture uh, as things are coming together. But I, I just wanted to get your thoughts on on that. Yeah, well, look, Adam Kadmon begins at right ascension of meridian zero degrees in Aries, and this never occurs along the ecliptic again. So, so you know, even though uh, I'm having spring in September down here in Australia, I'm still Arian, uh, though, because I was born on the ecliptic at, um, you know, two degrees. Um, uh, oh, agreed, agreed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Aries, no, so, no question. Yeah. So it, that part of it is uh, is unidirectional. See, um, because there is a big toroid, uh, toroidal field around the Earth that's massive. Um, you know, it goes enters the North Pole and goes out the South Pole, and that is a fixed um, field. Well, um, Thomas H. Burgoyne explains this so well. But you mentioned that um, you've, when you come into a sign, you've got to balance it with its other half. Very true. You see, the Aries-Libra axis is all about power. Um, Taurus-Scorpio, the next one, is riches. Gemini-Sagittarius is wisdom. Uh, Cancer-Capricorn is strength. Leo-Aquarius is honor. Pisces, Virgo is glory. And beyond that, the seventh um, thing that is acquired when we balance all of these um, axes, axes of the, uh, the ecliptic, we get what's called blessing, uh, a state beyond the conflicts of duality. Well... I'd call I'd call that polarity really. Well, would it um, would it be safe to say that when we enter here, that is our zero point? Yes. Okay. That's it. Yep. Okay. That because that's kind of what I think Daniel was getting at. Uh, in that, regardless of where you're born, northern uh, hemisphere or southern hemisphere, when you come in here, you're you're at that zero point as, uh, in relation to the ecliptic anyway. So, um, and there's that north south polarity thing going on like a magnet. So. To me, it would make sense that no, no matter where you came in, you always come in here at zero point and go from there. Yeah, yep, absolutely. What is happening is our beautiful nature, uh, as it begins to dance in the electric world from the causal still magnetic world, um, it you know it goes through and acquires all of the the archetypes as as the soul is created you know as the the soul is made the adam kadmon it comes from the ecliptic and so we have um you know we have not all the trinities in in scripture are all, always the same 
there's the most holy trinity and there is the holy trinity. See, the first trinity of God, because the monad, once he, once he begins to move, the monad is magnetism. And once it begins to produce an effect, it is all of a sudden a trinity. It can never be a duality. It can never be. Because the monad, once it moves from here to there, it has two polarities and a middle. And that is a trinity of things. But the first, mo the first trinity is called the most holy trinity. And the, the child of that trinity is the Christ. Whereas the child of the holy trinity, that is the logos, the word of God. These are two different creatures altogether. And in scripture, you know, it's only few that get the subtlety of the difference between these two trinities and th these two emanations. The first emanation can be likened to the first uh, triad in the um, Kabbalistic tree, Kitha, um, Chokmah and Binah. And the next trinity is the one below, which reaches Tifereth, the Christ. And that's the Logos, the Word of, the word of God in the heart. Whereas the, the, the crown chakra, that's, the, um, that's the, the Christ consciousness upstairs. Whereas in the heart you have the Word of God. There's two, two different trinities, you see. That's why they always point to the heart as the Son. The Father, the Catholics point to the, the crown chakra as the Father. And then they point to the heart and they indicate the sun and then the two shoulders of Gemini, the Holy Spirit. Because that is, that is the Holy Spirit is re in reference to Gemini's twin lungs. The lungs are Isis. And so you see, you, you always have, you know, the father and the mother and the son. Osiris, Isis and Horus. Or you have the father, the son and the Holy Spirit, which is the holy dove. And that dove is also Columbia, the woman, Eve, the divider. But, um, but see, this is the two, the two Christs, the Christ made flesh, the Word, and Christ consciousness, which, which never really partakes of, um, of the flesh. And this is where all the confusion has ever taken place. This is... This is why there are so many theologies. Syncretism one day will just clean all that up. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's um, only around the corner that all of the churches are just going to be cleaned up because they won't be able to hide from syncretism. It's going to come down on them with the full force of light very, very soon. And they will not be able to continue in their, you know, um, in their craft. Let's put it that way. They have a craft and, and they depend on its survival by telling lies to people and throwing away the keys rather than giving people keys, any kind of keys of understanding. And their job is to make it more and more cloudy. Oh, Jesus is coming in that cloud over there in a cumulus cloud. He doesn't like serious clouds. He likes, wait a minute, no, no, he's going to come in a storm cloud this time because he's angry. And the horse is black, not red anymore. Uh, you know, they, they just go around in their farty poo. Uh, sounds like I can, well, I can't hear Santo. I don't even know if you guys are hearing me. Oh, yeah, we've got a problem with the call. It's Santo's end. It's okay. Um, you know, I'm always concerned that we're getting uh, getting um, uh, issue with Blog Talk. Uh, I finally did get up on the board, so uh, we'll just wait for Santo to re. There he is. Okay. Yeah, you you left off at farted or something. Like farting. <laughs> it was good. It was a good. It was a good uh, break off. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, look. Um, all I had to say to finish that off that thought was that, um, yeah, you know, the the craft that they have is just mumbo jumbo. All they're trying to do is trying to make the the, the Christ, um, the Christ person in, in uh, creation as, as muddy as possible you know one minute he's a, he's a, he's a baby in Mary's arms the next minute he's a con conquering uh, hero in the clouds on a white horse next thing he's you know dead on a, on a cross they don't know which Jesus to resort to you know when, whereas you know it's quite simple Christ is in you and, and it always will be and never will be anything else and um and so this is their job. Their job is to bedarken souls, throw away the keys, 
rather than give them any kind of keys to understanding. That's why Jesus condemns them. Woe to you, criminals, scribes, Pharisees, lawyers, Sadducees, tax collectors, for you throw away the keys of understanding. And um, all I'm doing is sharing those keys to the blessings of many, many, many human beings. I'm sure many are prepared to curse me for it too because <laughs> they don't want this uh, information out there at all. Well, you know, they want people walking into their buildings with a quaint reminder of some guy getting strung up on a couple of two-by-fours. <laughs> yeah, don't do what we say. This is what you get, bitch. You know, uh, and uh, that's the irony of it. You know, they and they, they, they display it. People walk around. Uh, with with little uh, dead bodies on crosses on their on their necklaces and and it, the symbology of it is it's just constant reminder of don't mess with the system and this is what you'll get uh, and and they go to it uh, like suckling pigs you know this is the casting pearls before the swine at its worst and, and yeah you're right they will do everything in their in their power to make the story interesting appealing to keep people coming back. And, you know, here it is. If you were to walk up to me and start talking to me about this imaginary friend that you have, uh, I'd think you're nuts. But if you got a whole group of people talking about an imaginary friend, they call that religion. You know? <laughs> that is classic group insanity. You know, that's the, that's the hive mind, you know? But... Uh, we're breaking it all down. And, and here, my feeling tonight it just kind of dawned on me a little while ago. We're in the, la the last winter of the age. This is it. This is the last winter of this age. The new year begins where it's supposed to, March 21st. Just my thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. You won't recognize the new world after after this. You know, we were supposed to we were supposed to have this uh last year and um they know. They I mean the ones who have prevented who have done everything in their power to prevent the Christ consciousness from you know, from seeding um to perfection on this planet, you know they've um, they've resisted it to the bit bitter end. You know, Revelation talks about this where it says, "And wormwood was thrown down and cast down, but they repented not. And many plagues were sent down, but they did not repent." Well, basically, this is just all the plagues of living in the flesh that we acquire as we as we go. Unavoidable plagues, unavoidable. You know, sickness is unavoidable. Uh, and all all the troubles and, and woes that come with living in this secular setup that we live in, it's a true veritable hell. And so um, we are. There's there's only one way out, and that is a, you know a pristine life of um, service to light, really, where where we withdraw from this world, withdraw from all of the illusions, and they all they all are that that. People, you know, usually die of heart attacks on their way to work. You know, um, this is always this is always happening. There's there's a lot of anger and stress and resentment connected with you know nine to five jobs and forty hours a week, and uh, it, there's a lot of stress. This is this is a real cattle farm. You know, people think that um, you know, the pilgrims set off to the, the shores of the newfound lands to be free and everything like that. Well, I'm afraid, you know, um, all of that's a bit of a crock because what they don't realise is that before, before ever they, you know, supposedly discovered America via, via a um, cover name by Christopher Columbus, nothing but a corporate cover name, for the slanderous Vatican, who had been going there for hundreds of years, and the Templars, and they had been setting up posts for hundreds of years. In fact, uh, in the time of Columbus, it was noted that there were already buildings built by Western hands on the Americas. Well, because they founded 13 companies, which later became 13 colonies but they were originally 13 companies because one company per family of the uh, the 13 Merovingian original uh, bloodlines that claim that they are superior to everybody else and they had one company each 
and they established themselves as it was a farm. It was, and, with, and they were going to send people on their boats because only the elites had boats. No paupers, no pilgrims, and whatever else floated across that sea had their own boats. They all boarded boats that were run and owned by the elites. It was purely an elite business to get people off one farm onto another farm. And Australia is just that. Everybody running around, you know, um, a rental property now. I'm getting very important here. And, and they've got all these titles in their homes. This is just, it's all a crock of shit. You can't own anything anyway. But for a start, this land here that I'm standing on is not the corporate land of the crown because that's what they claim it to be they claimed it for the crown captain cook came here with a a uh, a trimmed maritime flag and planted it and done struck a deal a corporate deal with probably just one indigenous group and that's it and so we're living under the corporate banner of, I don't know, the Rothschilds or the Windsors. Windsors. Who knows who owns this country? And, and it's all an illusion. And everything will be foregone one day anyway, before we die. The whole concept of owning anything is we, we, we will we'll revert back to being custodians, usufructarians of this planet and everything that we find on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, uh, listen, we got a couple of people in uh, on the board here. I finally got uh, my uh, <laughs> Google Chrome to open. Um, Mike's there, and it uh, looks like we have Tainda. Aloha, kid. Aloha, Santos. Hello, Michael. How are you? Hey. Excellent. Back in Molokai. <laughs> right on. Yeah, so are we learning anything tonight? <laughs> This is wow. the, a lot we of. We're not blessed. We are oh. blessed. That's the, that's the joy of listening. In, in, in as much as, uh, um, you see, here's here's one of the reasons why I want people to get, <clears throat> excuse me, out of their left brain, explaining everything, as far as their experience goes, because your experience is completely irrelevant to me, completely irrelevant, because I don't know your experience. What I do know is when I'm listening to others, I am listening to it as to how it applies to my experience because I'm the only one experiencing my experience. So I'm listening for my clues. And this is why silence is actually golden if you're paying attention. So uh, this is why I love listening when Santa gets talking because things get triggered because I'm listening to the allegories. And it's, it's when things are being explained as factual, there's no, there's no drama in it, you see. It is strictly a factual thing. There is nothing uh, for me to get emotionally attached to uh, except looking and observing truth. So when truths that are, these are ongoing. I mean, we've talked about the Krishna story, the Christ story, the Muhammad. All of these stories are all the same one. And when you, when you get that, you start to see which version of the story appeals to you most that resonates with your life path, and this is one of the, the beautiful joys of having Santo here, bringing these things across, and then I can ask questions as they, as they relate to my experience, and little things that I'm pondering, and those little aha things that I'm looking for, and I, <laughs> I always get them. This is the joy of this table, because you know whether it's Santo or, or someone that comes to the table, um, there is always, always an aha moment and I know that when I get an aha moment that is one more layer of this onion that's peeled uh, I've, I said it oh, I hope we didn't lose the, no we're still on there I guess I might have lost Santo anyway uh, can you still hear me Mike I hear you Okay, good, good. Uh, yeah, it looks like their <laughs> Santo signal's getting messed with again but um, you know for me I'm looking for things that are pertinent to my experience my yellow brick road as things apply to me and and the minute you lose the drama oh that was what I was going to say the the minute you think you've won is the minute you've lost and the minute you think you're free is the minute you're a slave because that is a polarized position <laughs> you see <laughs> you have to be a free slave and a winning loser 
or a losing winner at all points. You have to find the zero point, and that's where I live. I live right in that middle area so I can listen to things from the winner and loser perspective, from the master and slave perspective, to see where I'm in balance and where I'm out of balance. And as soon as I find that balance, guess what I find there? Aha! There's a little piece of the puzzle. And, and you guys, i got to tell you, uh, I'm quite the drama queen when I want to be. It's when you get out of the drama. It's when you finally get out of the, the look at me, look what I can do, uh, explaining the literals and being emotionally attached and involved in them. Uh, you are, you're, you're bound and gagged. You will never see past your own nose. And I know because that was my issue. So I had to stop doing that. At least this is what worked in my experience. So I'm conveying something that gave me some an ability to see things from a very, very different viewpoint than I had been living most of this life experience. So anyway, that's the the joy of having uh, people like uh, Santa Bonacci, uh, especially at the table. And thank you so much, Santa, for hanging out every night. It's like, you know, uh, no pedestals here. You know that. I'm just, this, this is just my virtuoso to you because I know equally relevant what I say matters and what everyone else at this table says is equally relevant because we're all doing this together. So anyway, um, yeah, ah, sorry, just one of my little asides there. Sorry, guys. Just having a moment. Are you there, Santo? No, I think we lost him. Let me see if I can get him back in. Uh, where are we here? And uh, Tainda, three, uh, 317, is that you? Or who's that area code 317? Hello. Hello, Kate. Hello, Kate. Hey, how are you? Hi, Kate. Yeah, I'm who we got? Guy, Amy. Amy, how are you? Indian. I'm from Indiana. And what's on um, your mind tonight, hon? I'm sorry we lost Santos. I was, have you read the language, Crystal? Um, no, I haven't. I've heard of it, but I have never read it. Well, in the beginning, Santos kind of talked about it, and I had recently purchased it, and I kind of feel, and I don't mean to be rude, dyslexic and autistic as I'm reading it. And I was just kind of wondering, would I be doing okay looking through Wikipedia for, uh, you're so good with language and words, Kate, and so is Santos, but I'm a beginner. Well, here's the one thing that I like to get across to people. You cannot make a mistake. I know that is very difficult, that is very difficult to believe. What we have steered away from is uh, our own truth is thinking that we are making mistakes when we're not. What we are doing is is seeing contrasts to, so that we can see the truth. And when you when you start looking at the world from a perfect viewpoint, that everything is perfect, whether it's good or evil is irrelevant. It is absolutely perfect for what you need to see. And when we take the emotions out of it, that's when you see it, and not before it. Because if there's an emotion attached to it, this is why you, you, you said you'd go to Wikipedia, whatever. I don't, you, you could go, to, uh, hell, I love deciphering cartoons. Um, one of my favorite. Exactly. What, favorite I'm, what I'm worried about is, if I, I'm worried, will I get a correct answer from the Internet, or should I stay? Yep. I've been a nonfiction book person my whole life. So I'm just worried about this information from the Internet as far as breaking down the language and how it came to be and how we've changed it and uh, how we were taught it in school, which is different from what our insides were saying in our mind. Uh, As far as uh, just certain concepts that are put into you in your schooling years versus what you feel in your heart and your spirit and and your inner person. Right. Now, this this is the thing that I'm I'm getting at is because 
a lot of what you just described is exactly what was programmed into us to doubt our abilities to do things. You cannot make a mistake. You cannot. Creation is perfect. I've all, does that go in line? I've always believed that you never hear something that you're not supposed to hear. Well, that's and, it. All things and, for, that's all things for a reason. Yes. Right, and it was my sister actually that had said, "Hey, maybe you should check out Kate Renee, or maybe you should check out Santos." I believe she started me with Santos, and then Santos led me to you. And then it just, ever since then, my brain has just been, it it, it was kind of like an overload. And oh, yeah. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we, don't, we don't come at things lightly. We bring it right all to the table, and it can be very overwhelming. And the only reason you made it to this table is because you're ready. So take the, take the win, and let's carry on. Okay, okay. See, I, and, and the last couple of days, I've kind of just, kind of just taking it back and I've been reading the lang- language crystal and but my mind's on fire now and now that I'm reading the language crystal I understand that means uh, the force a uh, forward uh, um, there's so many different meanings that I always thought when I was younger then I went to school and now that I'm almost 39 I'm I'm realizing again I was right when I was younger I was more yes, right of course. than that. Well, yeah, and you see, we got derailed from our natural. This, this is how we got uh, into this game. And remember, this is a game, and everyone's taking it way too seriously. Way too seriously. I know, because I did. I get it, okay? So what we need to do is literally and allegorically lighten up. Because when we get caught in these dramas of, uh, those are the bad guys, and those are the good guys. You're polarized. You will never see balance because you are too busy on one side or the other. You know, we can talk about the elites and all the rest of it being evil and whatever, uh, but we'll ne- we'll never have a concept of what good is without that contrast. So that's right. why it's good. Chaos. We need chaos to right. Exactly. It's, um, I've come to learn. I, I've kind of always known that, but I've come to learn it again. Do you want to know? And <laughs> do you want to know how chaos creates order, and vice versa? Please. <laughs> everyone, everyone talks about chaos being this. Uh, well, at, in, in the beginning, there was chaos, right? And out of chaos came creation. And what do, what does the mother sound or Masonic Masonic talk about? Order out of chaos. Well, yeah, that's great, but that's only half the equation, because he, I can prove that chaos creates order, because chaos does everything has to balance. And I use the allegory of cr- making a pot of soup, and it's very easy. Now, for all of you, well, if you've ever had a bowl of soup in front of you, let's just use a bowl because not everyone makes soup like I do. It's okay, so we'll use a bowl. Imagine you've got a bowl of mushroom soup in front of you, and you want to throw some pepper in it. Now, you, you, you sprinkle pepper all over the top. What do you do after that? Do you let it sit there, or do you start stirring it into the soup? You stir it into the soup. Right, so what happens then is you're introducing chaos into the soup. That's why the spice gets carried throughout everything. So it's creating order as a result of the chaos. And I've I've postulated that you could stir something, soup enough, with all the pepper grains in it, that eventually every one of those pepper grains will be exactly the same distance apart on all points. Never, no one ever wonder why when you, when you add something to, like, add pepper to one side of the pot of soup and then you stir it and then the pepper's everywhere? So what part of order isn't that? That is order. That is putting creation out equally everywhere. Exactly. It, it's so perfect that you use that allegory because I said to my husband tonight, it's funny that now that I'm reading the language crystal that chefs don't understand that once you melt down sugar... It changes whether it be inorganic or organic. Once you melt down a certain substance, it depends on what the substance is, whether it's organic or inorganic. Or so chefs 
it's surprising to me that chefs aren't as far along as you and Kate are as well. I, I mean, it, it's all a pot of soup. I mean... <laughs> Well, again, this is this is a primordial soup. We're just putting the chaos back into it to make it back into order, where it has been reversed here. As I said a long time ago, we get out of this game by reversing. Reversing to reverse is re light of God. Ver from verily meaning truth. Say of himself, herself, itself, the complete God mind. That's how we get out of here. And this is the other side of the coin with regards to the linear calendar. Everyone thinks we're moving into the future when we're not. We're actually going backwards towards creation. Because in the beginning, God, we, God created this universe. That's past tense. So you can't really play a video game until you have a game grid set up, yeah? So what Correct. we're doing is actually moving, moving backwards back on the breathing in of creation. On the breath out, we create the game grid. And that's why you experience deja vu, because you're coming back through that which was already created. Of course you have a deja vu. You remember creating it on the way out. I have deja vu a lot. And I, I kind of feel somewhat, um, I'm sad somewhat for people that don't experience deja or they ignore it or call it something else. Because well, I again, experience it a lot. Yeah, that, that's the problem with, with the, the left brain analytical is it gets into all monkey chatter mode and it starts denying itself and it's living in a literal meat stick reality. And we have Santo back. Hey, finally. I've, I've only been trying to add you like a dozen times here. Yeah, I wonder, is that is it my fault? Because I might have low internet here. Could be. Real low uh, supply. Well, the call kept failing, so uh, yeah, it's hard, hard to say. But But there you are. You're back. Yay. And I uh, <laughs> have Amy in the call. Uh, what was the name of the book you mentioned, Amy? The Language Crystal. Lawrence William Lyons Wayne. Uh, <laughs> I'm so mixed up on uh, on words right now. Just I'm <laughs> only let's see, 85 pages into it. <laughs> well, for, for me, and, it. it it's it, for me. It's all about phonics. I don't get into any of the technicals anymore, and that's where I see all the magic. And I, I, I laugh many times a day when a word hits, and I go, "Oh, oh my! Look at that!" Uh, where we are so um, blind. To, well, yeah, we're so blind to this magic, but I, my eyes are opening to it, and it's. This is why people have got to lighten up and learn to laugh because. What a beautiful game. We are playing a practical joke on ourselves. And we gave ourselves all the clues to get back out. But you can't play a game if you know the outcome. You, can, you can't. And being all-knowing, as, as we are in the ourself, the one, we cannot play a game with ourselves if we are in that state of all-knowing. So we had to create our mirror opposite of all-unknowing. So there's the I know, I don't know Aquarius, and that's the age we're in here. But Santo, have you have you uh, heard of the language? I I've heard of it. I've just I've never read it. Um, just wondering if you have. Well, isn't that the book I was talking about? That's um, Bill Donahue's favorite book, The Language oh, yes. Crystal. You're, uh, that's why I know about yeah. it, and I was meaning to get it. Thank you. Yes. Hmm. It's yeah, a gem. On what, Thank on, you very much, Santos. It, it's a gem. My only, uh, my thought was in per. I thought that's a book I want to keep forever because I'll go back to it. But I'm wishing now that I would have bought one for my sister at the same time so that we could put our brains together with it, <laughs> so to speak. Because I'm, it's definitely a book I'm going to have to read twice just to make it sink in. I'm a beginner in, in, in almost all of this. I've kind of had it in my heart and my soul all along. My father is even very good at language and, and root words, and, and it comes naturally to him. And he still does the newspaper and whatnot. He doesn't care much for the Internet. So for him to know root words and language the way that he does and always corrected us, to find this book, Santos, I'm very appreciative. I'm so glad that my sister Angie told me about you, and then I learned about Kate and Bill Donahue and 
many, many multitudes of different facets of everything. And I love knowledge. (laughs) And I appreciate you both. And you guys both deserve to hear that on a daily basis repeatedly. (laughs) Oh, we love you. That's why we do it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that that book, uh, mine hasn't come yet. I ordered it uh, also a couple of weeks ago, and that's the book from which I learnt that um, the letter R is 666, the 18th letter of the alphabet, and the letter L, the 12th, is 6 plus 6. And this this structure also belongs to um, the language crystal. So it is correct. So we have two vying brothers, El and Ra. Uh, well, I've already spoken about him. Um, the proton and the electron in carbon. That's that's who it is. Um, pro is Pra, the proton. That's Ra, and the electron is L, the the brother of Ra. And these these are two brothers on the ecliptic. Basically all it is is Aries and Libra. That's all it is. Aries and Libra. Mars and Venus. Or, or would you or would you put that to light, dark, um positive, negative as far as the two different brothers? As as uh, far as um uh See, I, I'm so lost in it, I don't even know how to verbalize it. <laughs> I'm appreciative of the book, and and I'll quit holding up time, and I'll let you guys get back to it. I just want you to know you, both of you are appreciated greatly. Oh, Amy, and uh, it's just great, just great to have you. I, I was finally able to get the board open in my uh, internet, uh, well, the, um, my browser working here. So I just, got, I just got your Facebook post. So glad to have you come in and speak. This is the whole point of having this table. This is your yeah, table. Yeah, I love, I love it that there's some beginners, and I'm glad that I'm a beginner, and I was, I am now in, so that beginners know that yes, come in. And learn. Well, all are welcome here. This is the thing. You know, uh, yep. the only thing only thing I, I can't really say is, are you ready for it? The, the fact that you're here just tells me that the only reason that people show up to this table is because they're ready to. So take take your little uh, laurels and wear them proudly in, in the non-emotional sense. You got to this table because you were meant to and because you were ready to. This is why I, I speak of a collective all at this table. This is not my table. It's not Santo's table. This is our table. We just show up and set it and uh, wait for others to show up and bring their goods to the table, dump them on the table, let's pick through it, find the gems, and we all grow together in that regard. Uh, Santo is at this full-time just as myself. This is all we do all day, every day. And i, I got to tell you, when you're in a headspace... And you maintain that, and uh, Santo's been in it longer than I. I mean, I've really only been at it solid for four years. But uh, it's very difficult to to convey all the information that uh, that we have gathered. But the neat thing about it is, it's all very simple. It's it, it's explaining these simplicities. Okay, Santo's showing everyone the roadmap. Here's your roadmap. Learn how to read your map, or you're going to keep going in circles. And it's a very specific map. Uh, your name is a roadmap. I, I've shown that. I mean, that's how I found my original path uh, to know that all things here are magical. And all we're trying to do at this point is to empower you back into the God Christ status. You never left. You just are playing a game. We're, and if you're ready to step out of the game, then welcome. This is why you're at this table. We're, you know, we're the bigger kids. We've been through the nonsense. We've been the bad I've guys. Had to, I've had to mention to a few of my friends that I, I have, I've been to different religion churches and studied different religions. And, and I've kind of had to slowly explain to my friends that I'm not buying into the um, organized um, set up. You have to, I'm not buying into that. God is in me, God is in you, God is in everyone, and let's move on. Let's get over the religious, let's 
let's move. So I've slowly been weeding out my uh, Facebook friends, let's say. I'm, I'm well, just not. I'm not you're, you're kind, you're, Yeah, you're kinder than me. If somebody talks to me about uh, religion, the first word that comes out of my face is, "Well, <laughs> bullshit." Okay, <laughs> you know, and having yeah, been there, just, I'm, I'm early into it. I'm still early into it. Oh I, yeah, I'm yeah. working on getting up the gusto, and I was well, not raised religious. <laughs> lucky ironically. you. Yeah, ironically. Lucky you. <laughs> yeah, my well, go figure. Have no religion. <laughs> <laughs> Losing my religion by REM. Have a listen to that one. That says it all that you need. You know. Oh, I know that one. <laughs> yeah, and a great, a great point here. I just wanted to share from uh, Daniel on uh, uh, Facebook, and I, I totally agree. Uh, in context of the words, sovereignty movement is bullshit. Absolutely, it is. The, the, the whole idea. See, that's why I don't like using these words because they, um, you know, like. Free men on the land, or sovereign, or sovereign citizen, or any of this stuff, because of the the convoluted and polluted uh, vibes it brings up. Uh, this is about returning to center, zero point. This is about regaining your knowingness of the God consciousness. This is what this game is, and. Everything else to me is distraction. All things legal are all things bullshit. All things religion are all things bullshit because they're both one and the same, right? If there is any Correct. sense of at, at the end of the day, the common saying is you don't take it with you when you go. Uh, as well, exactly. far as finances and but you do take something so, with you. No, I you mean as far as the yeah, the no, monetary, I'm, I'm, the, the I'm agreeing with. You. Yeah. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. There's only one thing you take with you at the end of your game. And that's your experience. Your good yeah. deeds and your bad deeds. And what and your lessons and the ones you missed. And you'll have to come back and repeat in kindergarten if you wish. I just chose not to play kindergarten any longer. I've been here uh, enough. And uh, for anyone that's thinking I'm coming back to save their sorry ass a second time, no, because I'm not here to save it this time. You're here to save it. I'm here to save my own in the process because I am one and all. I awaken all awaken. So you got to be selfless and selfish at the same time. Um, and look what the system has done to us, has completely convinced us that thinking of ourselves is selfish. And that's an ego program. It, the hardest thing for people to do is to break the programs. That's it. And this is not about... Uh, Jesus wasn't uh, in the allegorical story in the Bible. Jesus wasn't here to start a new religion. He was here to bust the programs. We're all doing. The, I'm just doing the same thing he did. Santos doing the same thing. This is the very same thing that all the teachers were trying to convey. And Santo, that list is long and distinguished, is it not? Oh yeah, you can you can trace them all the way back to um, to the original Toth in. Uh, in Egypt, all the way back to well, that's Mercury, um, and of course, the, Mercury is the right hemisphere of the cerebrum. Mars is the left, uh, and this is why Rome has managed to marshal up the whole world uh, into a martial state because of Mars, the left brain. Everybody's working out of that martial, choleric side. And whereas we have to return to Hermes and we've got to do it real, real quick. That's the right hemisphere. And unless we unless we get there, we're we're in grave danger. Well, grave I, danger. Yeah, just to add even more to what you're saying, we need to return to the hermaphrodite, the Hermes Aphrodite, which is Mercury Venus. Now remember the relationship that Mars and Venus had in the mythologies. They were always the ones that were joined together. So while Rome keeps us in the martial mind that Santa was speaking of, that is the, the masculine. And of course, what? <laughs> now have a look at the allegory here with Admiralty. Where are all the birth bonds placed through? They're placed through Venus and held there. So that is the, and this whole game has been about capturing the divine feminine and holding it, the Regis Stir, to rule the divine feminine creative essence, the dead crone, uh, the, you know, the uh, crone corporation, the dead, dead mother who wants her dead babies. So I, I see the allegorical tie-ins of how, the, how this game that we're playing here 
is all about controlling the the Venus, the divine right mind, uh, Hermaphrodite rather, the, uh, Hermes and uh, and Aphrodite, where Mars is the jealous lover. Works for me. It, it works for me too, and and both of you with learning of the cerebellum and the pineal gland and the cell salts and. It, 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 everything makes sense. Not just what you and Santos have put out, <laughs> but what I I go from what you and Santos put out, and then look somewhere else on the internet, and it's like, and then I look at pictures of our actual cranium, and yes, that's exactly what it looks like. And and I just wish everybody could see it. And I'll go ahead and mute myself and let you guys carry on. I've took up too much time. Oh, <laughs> so no, I'll go it's, ahead and mute myself. But I, absolute, I just absolutely perfect. I see it totally now, <laughs> and it's all coming in so quick. And I just need to. I'm I, I'm not good at meditating, and I need to learn to meditate. Well, so you know that, what I say, right? Get deep, get dark, shut up. <laughs> Just yes, and just be exactly. spend some spend some time with the most beautiful essence in the universe, will you? You, you know, exactly. just be with you. <laughs> and we never and do I'm that. I'm very man that thinks duct tape fixes everything, so I'm sure I can find some duct tape and at least shut my fire hole. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. I love it, Amy. Beautiful. All right, I love you, bro. You guys have <laughs> a great you. night and All have right. a happy new year. <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much. You're more than welcome, Amy, and uh, your mic's still open if, if you if you feel I'm, like jumping I'm in. I'm now. I'm muted okay, now. Okay, hon. Great. Uh, I'm going to open up the lines. Hey, Santo, I'm not really going to run over. We've got 25 minutes left here, so I'm going to call it at the top of the hour. Are you cool with that? Yep. Okay. Sure. Yeah, it's just a uh, long haul, like it's about three and a half hours, between three and a half and four hours driving today to get to where I am, so it's... Ugh. <laughs> it's still it's still not got here. But I, I've got a, a few callers in on the call here. Uh we've got six one seven, that's Boston, and we got three zero five, mic is open, and seven two zero, your mic is open as well. So let's uh finish off the last uh, twenty five minutes with a candid discussion, shall we? What's sure. up guys? Aloha to all. Aloha. What's going on? Aloha. Miami here. Listen, yeah. this is Pocho, guys. Uh, Kate um, Santos, um, uh, I got to get out there and put what you guys are talking about in my own, you know, write my own book. Otherwise, I'll be just taking what you say, and, you know, and that's not what it's about. Um, well, it is you know, yours, you, right? <laughs> huh? Hey, Pocho, hey, l- listen, there. See, here's, here's the, the beautiful thing about creation. Um, what part of me isn't you that I'm creating for you that you're not creating for me? You write your book, it's ours, so it doesn't matter. Copyrights are for fiction. Uh, ownership is for meat sticks. We don't play there. Yeah, but you got knowledge that I, I am yet to acquire. I'm in the process. And I need to do what I got to do, which is I got to challenge the police because they're telling me I'm not allowed to put a piece of paper on my neighbor's door so I can get business and feed my family. So if I don't uh, do that, I'll have a challenge, you know. In well, you'll like the latest. You'll like the latest little piece I put together. Attention, police agents! It's on my website, kateofguy.wordpress.com. No, no, I hear uh, you, and I read it. I've read it. I read that, and, and plenty more. But what I truly, and I know I should, I don't want to ask you about the particulars of my situations. But what I do want to ask you, because you have the answer better than myself, it's about my own self. Yeah. By what I would really like, if you have the time and, and can do this for me, is to tell me about me. I wanted to give sure. you my date, my birthday, and see if Santo can, you know, tell me about a little bit more about myself so I know who I am when I do what I got to do. You know what I'm saying? No, I hear you. Totally. Yeah, we've got a bit of an echo Santo? in the background there. Oh, did we lose Santo again? No, no, no oh, I'm here. Oh, okay, there you are. Yep. So if I may, my birthday is July 31st, 1968, Caracas, Venezuela. Uh, yeah, just give me that again because I've just pulled up the screen now. July 31st, 
1968, Caracas, Venezuela, I believe it was 2.45 p.m. Okay, um, 31st of July, 1968, uh-huh. 2.45 p.m., Caracas. You got it. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Well, um, certainly the highlight of your chart is the spiritual. Um, you've got both both of your two benefics, Venus and Jupiter, in the ninth house. That's very, very interesting. Um, and the sun is just inside the eighth house, where I don't like him to be. Um, although your son is very happy because he is the ruler of uh, Leo, so he gets five points. But the problem here is that you have um, Mars, the Sun and Mercury in the 8th house. There's a lot of uh, destruction and transformation happening in your life, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And in partic- yeah, and it's very spiritual and connected to your father. So um, this kind of energy is not really good for you know, father and son relationships or... Or it, um, you know, as I, as I said uh, uh, before, in, if the son is in the eighth house, it can mean the early death of the father, right? So, uh, let's have a look at Mars in the eighth house, though. That's going to be an interesting one. Mars in the eighth house. My son has Mars in the eighth house, so um, it's, I, know, I know all the... Um, the negative things coming from that, and you've got a a T-square pointing to the 8th house. So your chart has a T-square in it, and um, um, it's pointing to the 8th house where Mars is. So this is very, very telling here, brother. There's some, um, uh, you know, transformation is really, really, really a a hot issue in your life. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, big changes and transformations. Uh, Mars in the 8th house. Mars in the 8th house by day either denies inheritance or strips it away in prescription. If he has the sun and moon in opposition, he indicates blindness. Alone in this house, he predicts poverty, difficulties, fevers, riots, revolutions and dangers. Well, he's not alone in this house. That's that's Mars. Mars is is, is okay um, because uh, he's with other planets, so it's kind of softened. It's a little bit more sort of um, his energy is a little bit more subdued. Although um, I don't like this activity in the eighth house. There's definitely some um, trouble that you have to keep um, keep rectifying coming into your life from this house for sure. Uh, you've got Pluto and Uranus in the 10th house, so your your career path is very eccentric, whether you like it or not. Um, it's going to be eccentric. You're going to have weird jobs or strange jobs, or you know you, you're going to have find it very difficult to be subjected to um, bosses because Uranus is just too rebellious, quite a handful, very very erratic and very um, inventive nature. So it's going to be hard for you to walk, work under bosses that have limited scope of mentality, you know. You need some geniuses to work with. Uh, the moon in the 11th house is in, in Libra. I love uh, Libra moons. My wife has a Libra moon, and it really gives a balanced reaction. I, I love it. It's, you, can, you can really sense a Libra moon. The, person, the people are very, very sweet in their reactions somehow you know they're very poised very balanced and poised when they react you can notice this it's a striking feature with libra moon so you're lucky to have that you'll probably be a very good fighter you know being leo leo fire and you have a um scorpio uh you have a sagittarian ascendant that's the arrow that's fight power man that is electricity at its Wow, you know, you could really direct, um, you would be very, very strong in the hips. You know, Bruce Lee was a Sagittarian. Uh, He was a galloping horse, and he would always use his feet, uh, his legs, 
and that kick to knock over you know people twice the size of him. He was only my height. He was exactly yeah. the same height as me. Yeah, so you would really punch a good kick and you'd be a really good fighter because you would have all the fire, you'd have a lot of vital energy, but you would have a lot of poise in your reaction having that Libra moon. Mate, this is a really good fighting chart you've got here. Have you ever done fighting, like any kind of fighting? No, no, actually, no. I'm, I'm a loving. I love. I mean, you know, I don't. I don't fight. I stay away from fight. Last time I fought was probably 30 years ago. So you know, um, I'm a fighter and surviving in life. I've been self-employed 12 years, and you know, I, I you know, I, yeah, I can't stand bosses, and I got to redo myself. Close one business and redo myself in something I have no experience. But now the cops are in my have become an obstacle, and I just can't swallow the fucking cops. Excuse my friends, becoming an obstacle in my life when I want to feed my family. You know. Oh yeah, so, don't listen, brother. Just um, all you need is to keep coming to this show, and you will have in 10 minutes. In 20 minutes, you'll have remedies for um, uh, all the uniforms that are coming your way. You need to deal deal with those uh, or let them be dealt with um, uh, severely by, you know, by claiming your witnessship of their crimes. You know, just claim the highest claim, brother, because the, the, these, these suits um, have got no claim at all. Let them know. But anyway, a Sagittarius you know, in my search in the past two, three years for looking for knowledge to, you know, uh, I've never found uh, people that can resonate with the common sense more like you uh, and and Kate and 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 some of the others, uh, uh, you know, that I've you know that I've heard. And and but no matter how much hours, that's my wife, <laughs> I spend. Uh, there's a point where I got to, you know, put it out out there myself and. Uh, you know, and I have to start soon because I got to feed my sam- my family. You know, so I don't know if it's going to cost me going to jail or how they're going to react to my information and how I'm going to be able to express it when I'm out there at the moment. But there's only one way to find out, brother. So, you uh, wish me luck. Yep. Well, yeah. You um, all you need is to be within yourself and. Uh, not to play by any of their mumbo jumbo. Uh, you can never understand their language. Let them know that. Um, you can never be in their jurisdiction because you are flesh blood and you are the, a witness being alive. Hence, unless you have committed a crime, they've got uh, no reason detaining you or holding you because you're a witness now and you're not creating joinder to their legal fiction. You know, so you can, in one breath, you can reclaim your DNA on the spot. You don't have to, you know, send in, um, I don't know, Kate might disagree disagree with this, but, uh, you know, you can, um, in any situation, you can reclaim your DNA back from them and, and steal it off them, from, or not steal it off them, but snatch Take it off it them. Because, well, well yeah. you, again, Santo, you're absolutely right, and I totally agree. Uh, this is not a physical take back this is a spiritual take back once you understand where the contract was made with the DNA seal of mum and dad on the registration and the intent contained within that covenant that's a seal it's the highest covenant once you know this that and, and that the, the the birth name that was created in legal fraud is fraud uh, that is where you need to get see the contra- all the contracts we create are not created on paper they're not created in the physical they are created in thought that which you agree with, you are in contract with. And once you see, this is why it's important for me to get concepts out. Because once people can see both sides of that coin, see the concept, then they can either agree with it or disagree with it. Now you've got a viewpoint from zero. That's what I do here. So you're absolutely right uh, with regards to the DNA. On the, because what you do in the as above as cause, you change in the physical as below effect. So this is why... We all get wrapped up in wanting to do, 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 do all the time, yet we're not, we're doing it backwards. You have to be, 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 okay, in order to yep. do, do, do. So you've, And this whole game, the martial game, is about getting us so wrapped up in the physical, thinking that we need to physically do things, we're at effect to the effect. So what I'm saying is, in order to break contract and change contract, and remember here it is all about contract, we need to change our mind to change our universe. Once we change our mind, then we put things into into motion if we need to. For me, the game is simply being, putting all my stuff together, 
and sending it out into the ether because I know the cause I have as God. That's the difference. And once uh, Pocho gets the concept, or anybody gets the concept, those, now those documents have spiritual power. Until that point, they are just paper. That's yep. the yep. real key to the game. Once you know what's on that and it resonates with your with you fully and you get the concept, you have your aha and go, yes, now I get it. Now that is a spell. Up until that point, it is just mere sigils on the paper that are controlled by another's creation. What you're doing now is changing that full creation and the spell with your intent. You're overriding the original spell. Now you're creating. Now you're in cause. Now you create the effect. And I do it every day. Yeah, have you ever have you ever played a game with um, with a child and you know you know you know that you're going to thump that little kid you know because you are a, a gazillion times better you know whether it be um, you know uh, with ball skills or racket skills or even a game of board game like Monopoly or something like that and and you know that you can whip their butts and really make them feel like they're never going to beat you, right? Um, now, this is how you are going to be when you, when, whenever you will be a- approached by the, the uniforms. Just remember, please, please remember, they are just playing a silly little legal game. It is so childish that you have gone way past their mentality and it will be known to them by the way you speak. This is why Jesus says, when you are being uh, um, taken before the tribunals, do not practice what it is you are to say, because what it is you are to say will be given to you, for it is not you speaking, it is I. The witness will speak through you. You know, don't worry. If I were going to be detained by policemen tomorrow or, or, or some on day in the near future, um, I would uh, take the opportunity and say, well, guys, I'm, you know... Uh, Finally, you know, we can get a, a nice chance to talk. And I would just preach to them about how they can join me and together we can make a stand against all the other abusers of the system and we can turn this whole around. And that's all they're going to get from me until they, you know, release me from, from uh, detaining me. I will make them converts into the true, the true way, which is freedom for all or for none. Hey. Mm-hmm. And I and I yeah, let, let's see how I play, how it plays out when I don't give out a name and just go by the name of Pocho and then try to book me in the in the uh, in the uh, okay. that would be that would be an exciting brother <laughs> manifest a different reality okay I hear it. I am. spiritual something better for yourself Michael I'm gonna jump all over that because you're bang on the money because here's the thing now if I was ever to encounter one of these uh, uniform fraudsters. That means that I still have something to let go of. I still have a contract to break. Because when you have this energy entering your game, that energy is telling you that you are still out of balance. There is still a contract in place somewhere that you need to dispel. So this is why I work the way I do in terms of what I write to break these spells so that you don't have to have these entities in your universe. Because once you get an aha moment, you put on the spiritual armor. And the only time that you will be spiritually free of this contract is when you finally say completely and inexorably no to the whore of Babylon in all ways, all regards, with all intention of, I have (laughs) no intention, uh, and that's the joy of actually having a non-legal name anyway. Uh, outside of the system, but that is just another physical manifestation to show the spiritual intent, right? So, uh, with the old name, as I was explaining earlier today, um, and I, I, I said this last night, uh, I gave out all my information for anyone that wanted to order a birth certificate to be the old fiction name that was registered on June 15, 1964. Anyone that heard that can go with the information I shared and order the, that that uh, birth certificate and start creating ID with it. Go and knock yourself out. That is why everyone on this planet that uses a legal name is actually a false impersonator and can be one of 7.3 billion. So you, what you are doing when you are in agreement with that, and I need you to get this, when you are in agreement with that, 
you are party to 7.3 billion points of consciousness. So if there are pedophiles, you know, like the Queen and the rest of these people, you are in spiritual joinder with them, saying that you are them and that you are guilty of that. This is how you separate yourself from that consciousness, the hive mind. This is the, this is the consciousness that I'm speaking of here, not the hive mind. The hive mind is illegal. You want to be Borg, knock yourself out. Live in the cube, enjoy it. If you don't, you really need to get this concept that you cannot be with the whore at all. You can't be halfway in this bitch. If you're going to play with her, go balls deep or get out. And Kate, it is and that I, simple. And, you, and for me, that's who you do it with. Yep. Not the cop or the asshole you meet on the street. I'm inviting all of you to sit down with the whore of Babylon, Kronos, whoever it is. Exactly. That's who your attention needs to go to. That's who you're finishing this game with, not the yep. guy on the street. Well, that's where it's spiritually being caused from. Those are the beings. I welcome you to sit down with them. Quit being afraid. End it. It's that easy. Yep. You know, but people are clinging on to this and clinging on to that in the physical realm, and, and that's why I hold this peace as diligently as I do, and I will not relinquish it because I know I'm the only one that I know of that is at this particular point of absolute no contract with the whore. Period. It's all, a, it's all about knowing who you are, which I greatly respect yourself and Santos, is the fact that you guys know who you are. Mm -hmm. We're God. We get and it. And I'll let you in on a little clue. The <laughs> whore of Babylon actually doesn't control the system. Nope. She doesn't. You do. Thank you. You control the game. What part of change your mind, change your universe are, are people getting? This is when you finally see the mirror, when you understand that you are all points of consciousness at all points of time. And anything that you are in agreement with, with this game, you are in agreement with all points of consciousness. This is why you need to stand on your own, save yourself, get your mind straight, and you, then you'll start shifting laterally on the timeline of now versus the literal linear, you know, uh, as we've been raised to see the calendar is useful, but it's, it's, as, it's as evil as it is good. And you have to see both sides of that to get it. So you are the only reason you are experiencing what you're experiencing. That is it. I cannot tell you that any clearer that everything that you get that is good, yes, it's your fault. And everything that you get that is bad, yes, it is your fault. What we're doing here is streamlining finally and we're moving this timeline sideways where we're, we're, we're recreating in, in this infinite realm of possibilities the game that was already built. We're just going through the ride with the, with the thought that, that we don't know what's coming, but we do. We, we have it blocked so that we can enjoy the game. It wouldn't be a lot of fun watching the same game over and over knowing what the score is and what the outcome is going to be. So we have to create a mystery or my story in order to get that. So every one of us, every point of consciousness has that responsibility of the all because you, listening right now, are the only point of consciousness that you are aware of. I am just a player in your movie as you are a player in mine. I just direct my movie now. That's the only difference. It is so, so easy. That's why I know we've already won this game if you want to consider winning and losing. We're following the natural order of things, and this is what Santo brings to the table. He's showing the natural order. I'm just showing, you know, that's why I, I was asking about the Krishna ankle Pisces thing, because I want to see how that game played out to see how this game plays out, right? So my curiosity is insatiable in that regard, because, I, okay, what's next? And I get to watch it unfold daily. I get to see my cause. I do. This is it's it's great because I know what my experience is. I know what my allegory is, and I'm just looking at the headlines, going, "Yep, yep, got it, got it, got it." How many times has this game shifted the next day when we talked about it the night before? <laughs> Countless times. This is the power I'm trying to give back to try to show you guys. Uh, okay, do you know what the critical mass to me is? Um, and if I, I used to think, how many people? And then I'd bring it, you know, it's one, like you said, one shall awaken, it's when we did, all of us. 
a uh, long time ago, remember. But let's talk on a, I'm talking to you, whether I haven't met you, but there's about nine people. I see my wife, my kid, there's two in the phys- so-called physical spiritual I'm seeing. But what I'm getting at is, we should think 13 shamans, we've talked about this. Then I thought 11. Now I'm pretty sure it's nine. Nine of us. That's it. This whole collective imagination changes to what we love. Right on. Freedom. Oh, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you, gals. Thank you all. Thank you. Leo Rising, this is the hot. I have love, laughter, and joy for all. In the cash. Hello? Brother, I'm here in the middle of the Pacific. The most water of anybody on this planet around me. <laughs> and this is love. Vibrating, resonating out wave upon wave around this planet. This being we call Gaia and some other names just like ourselves. Man, beautiful. I feel it in my heart. This is home. Beautiful. Yeah, nothing like having 20 seconds to spare to get on the board. We got bumped. Anyway, uh, 10 seconds left, guys. So listen, we're going to roll out of here and... uh, here, let me see. I got. Uh, I'll do the shout out. I got area code six six one. Let me bring Santo back in. We'll roll out in a couple of minutes. Here, we're in the recording. Couldn't do a shout out. Sorry about that. But anyway, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. And let me see what we got here. Uh, just wait and see if Santo comes back in. Area code six six one. You there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm just um, waiting for you to come back. <laughs> yeah, anyway. yeah. Go figure. Must have must have been uh, you know nailing it there. That's why uh, it just went dead on this end. It was pretty bizarre. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Santa, we got you back. Thought I heard him. Yeah, let me just double check. Yeah, it's been it's been fun tonight, eh? Oh, it's yeah, it's still trying to get through to him. Okay, and uh, area code four two five. I know that number. <laughs> it's Nina. Hi. I <laughs> see. What is it about your number? I just get this mental block, you know? Unbelievable. <laughs> anyway, how are you? That's okay. I am great. Thanks. I just tuned in, and so I'm just listening in and seeing what's what's going on on, on your side and everybody else's. So I'm just going to sit back and listen in. Well, we're, we're, I, I was going to just roll out when we got bumped off the air, so... Uh, oh. uh, yeah, no, I just want just wanted to call it a bit early tonight because I'm. Uh, okay. it, was a, it was a lot of driving today, but uh, Santo, are you there? <laughs> Did we still haven't got him? So I, yeah, see what hey, I mean. It's before just, you it, roll it, out, I just yeah. wanted to say thank you and and Santos for taking the time and everyone else who uh, for taking the time to share your knowledge. I greatly appreciate it. I will keep you all posted <laughs> on, pro- on the events to come. And yeah, no worries, from, my from friend. From the bottom, you know, from the very deep bottom. Well, hey, uh, thank you. That's a mirror, mirror. It's both ways. So uh, you're welcome, and thank you, because we do this together. And an idea is only a good idea when it gets gets agreed upon, and not before it. That's how we create. So that, that's why, for me, getting people on their God page matters so much, because as soon as you're there, we have an agreement, and that's when we get real causal in this game, right? Yep. Yep. That's why things happen the way they do, you know, and that's one of the joys of being on air where we can get a gathering of a lot of people together. And all it takes is for one one uh one being to resonate 
And that works both ways too. When someone comes to the table and brings something, I'm I'm listening with the ears to go. I need to hear something here. And when the concept is shared, I get it. That's an agreed upon. As soon as it resonates, this is the whole idea of resonance. That um, it, it's a matched wave, and that's where creation occurs, right? So uh, it, it's absolutely critical that we all get on the same page here. So, like I said, my game here is only to empower you back into the God status that you are, and that uh, when you finally realize that. Uh, the only thing that will set you free is truth, and, is, and the minute you stand in it, this is this is the thing about the natural order. When we defy the truth or uncreate it, defy, right? Phi ratio, creation itself, sacred uh, golden mean, right? When we yeah. defy the truth, we defy creation. We uncreate it. So... Snowflakes, um, cellular structure, bonds, and the um, pentagonal, right? So, hex is carbon, it's a crystal. And that's why Adam Cadmon, Adam the Diamond Creature, is a crystal. Carbon-12 crystal creatures, a special um, Adam Cadmon model. We are now entering Adam. Um, the fourth Adam was the most fallen of all Adams. You see, the... Uh, <coughs> oh, well, I won't get... have inherited the fifth atom now, and that's the quintessential atom, the quintessential being. We've gone through all the fall and silver and, and bronze and iron ages. We've done that. We have absolutely done that. And, you know, we, we acquired more and more solid and heavy as we have fallen each fall. But now we are going to be transformed. <laughs> and um, this can only occur once we all, you know, um, the elect have been uh, rounded up, so to speak, and numbered. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Jehovah's Witnesses, are uh, their elect are dwindling in numbers. I believe the anointed ones are only about 7,000 in number now. Um, there was only 35,000 of them in, in 1935 when they separated the great crowd from the other sheep, uh, sorry, the um, the elect from the other sheep. And um, this crowd has been dwindling ever since. You know, I did my figures uh, on that, and they should have been 60. I don't know how <laughs> a, new, uh, a new mob keeps turning up, but... Uh, apparently, the, the 144,000 have been chosen and numbered according to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, money has been back, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, keep going, keep going. This is funny. Yeah. So, so we see that everything... Back to this number 12. It's, it's the cosmic number. It is the, it's imprinted in the universe. It's really basically 666, the mark of the beast. And, you know, on the lower level, everything that is nasty, but on the higher levels, it's how everything gets done. Everything gets done this way. Everything travels along at zero point, March the 21st, even got a name for it. And March is in relation to Mars, because Mars is the ruler of the first always. Wherever you go, in every fractal, in every cosm, whether it's the macro, the meso, or the microcosm. And there's always light travelling on an ecliptic. Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ in the, in the heavens, Helios, tells us every March the 21st, when he begins backwards for Mars. And so... And Mars is basically just the waters, maritime, 
you know, but Mars is also the waters above and the waters below. They're always, um, there's always two waters. I mean, you know, when you look at water, i.e. Earth, um, these are feminine. And these are the four rivers. You see, these are the four rivers of the Garden of Eden. And before the Tetragrammaton works with the Sept, Seven, Septenary, Set, Saturn, and it works with the Twelve, the Twelve um, of, uh, Consciousness along the ecliptic. There are 12 central suns along the ecliptic. And they all have... This is why there's... There's um, four elements along the ecliptic. Aries is fire, then Taurus is earth, Gemini is air, Cancer is water. And this... Times. And so you have... Um, all the elements are represented three times, but they change in their modality. They also have cardinal, fixed, and mutable mo modalities. Actually, the fixed ones represent the true, true uh, essence of the element. So Taurus represents Earth. Truly as it is. And not in its, its birth stage, which is cardinal. It is in its growth stage, which is what is, you know, representative of nature. And then mutable, of course, is the destructive part. Everything is born, grows, and decays. This is what God... ...dissolution, or you can have degeneration there. But generation is everything. So everything has three phases. The elements should have three phases. Of course, fire should be cardinal. There should be a, a an opening point of fire, a beginning point where everything emanates because that's what fire does. The movement principle in the universe. Earth is the, um, the uh, still principle. Everything that is... You've got fire generating everything, all forms. All movement comes from fire. So this is why the ecliptic begins at Aries. Agnes, ignite. Agnes, the fire. Everything generates with fire. And on the ecliptic, there you have the... the hence, Aries is the only true place to begin... All your astrology, all your everything you ever do begins in Aries. <laughs> Don't be like these um, these so-called. I do have some um, astrological uh, books that were written by Christians that are trying to uh, trying to bring the Maseroth into Christianity by teaching that everything begins in Virgo. <laughs> begin in Virgo, and then they go around the ecliptic that way. And uh, they're trying to reclaim the zodiac for Christianity. You know? Yeah. <laughs> they kind of make you... Uh, yeah, sort of, um, it's, it's oxymoronic is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's vomitous. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's a, the, yeah, I was trying to use the nice word. Very pukey. Uh, yeah, it's all good. Vomitous works. I like that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Uh science of the ecliptic that all gospels are in the sky and hence all their literatures written about this, what the ecliptic does. Uh so
mitzvahs out of the Garden of Eden. So you see 5, 8 and 13 in the Fibonacci sequence and 4, 7 and 12 that sit just below them. And those are sacred numbers in scripture. Uh, the four has to do with the uh, tetragrammaton and um, <clears throat> yes it is the original but uh, it has to do with the tetra the four rivers of matter or well physical creation is seven and twelve is is um mind. But the mind comes from the um, the dodecahedron universe we live in. It is a dodecahedron, and um, the um, the signature uh, element of the universe being carbon, and in particular the isotope all twelveness comes from. Uh, we ninety nine percent of carbon is that isotope. Ninety no, sorry, ninety nine percent of all the that isotope carbon twelve, which is six 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 really, six neutrons, six protons, and six electrons. Now, which gives us um, basically the uh, for Ra the the eighteenth letter in the al English alphabet six six six, and L is the twelfth letter in the alphabet. 6 plus 6 for L, 6 plus 6 plus 6 for Ra. And <clears throat> and so carbon-12 is really the most abundant element in the universe. Um, and it uh, comes in the series, uh, fourth in the series, helium, oxygen. Those are the abundant gases but carbon is the structure it's a carbon crystal it's a diamond crystal hiding in the word diamond is the word at dom dom is diamond and that's much clearer in in italian um adam is a dam uh, and of adamo is amore the creature that is loving, because once we transmute the carbon-12, um, we now have a, a carbon in our body which is able to, um, you know, well, it's theurgic, it's the theurgic element. This is how we transmute We change that carbon-12 into carbon-7. Carbon-7 is nothing but... Um, Six electrons, six protons. Now, I don't know how they get all these protons and electrons and neutrons because this is all just just a crock, really, according to Walter Russ Russell. These are just measurements of vibrations. That's all the elements are. But apparently, six structure in carbon was known to the ancients because it's basically the hex. You look at your honeycombs. You look. Is, is every okay well welcome to outside the box I know we normally have uh, uh, an intro here but unfortunately I cannot get the blog I got the blog talk board opened I don't even know if you guys are hearing me or not <laughs> but I got the board opened and I did bring Santo in but uh, not there I guess I'll have to see what's going on there I don't even know if I'm on the air right now so there you go I'm going to keep trying to get uh uh, the blog talk page up my studio I can't see it I got it up to get called in but I can't see it from that point forward so I'm running a bit blind and I uh, can't <laughs> I can't bring anybody into the call oh uh, anyway it's all good it's all good so I haven't got a freaking clue what I'm going to talk about tonight um, out and about doing the uh, uh, cross Canada tour I guess <laughs> anyway um yeah, so just uh, bear with me, guys. I'm trying. Oh, there's Santos. Let me see. Okay, can you hear. Okay, thank you. 
Yes, Santo, I'd love to have you in. It's always nice to have someone to talk to. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and Christopher. Um, okay, thanks, uh, Christopher. So <laughs> I may end up having to hand over the board to you. Uh, it, if anything happens, there's no way I can get back. So there you go. Hello, Santo. How are you? Great. Um, fantastic, Kate. Yourself? Good, good. Wow, at least I got I got here, so that's a that's a pretty good thing. I'm looking at a white screen right now. Uh, apparently, the web page is not available for Blog Talk. Isn't that a funny thing? So, um, yeah, hot on the heels of yesterday. I'm not even sure uh, where to begin tonight, but I think um, well, we've got the game. There's no question. That's the one thing that I'm finding. I think maybe we can. Uh, I, I would like to focus a bit on, on the astrotheology tonight, if that's cool with you. Oh yeah, yeah, I've got I've got stuff to um, <laughs> to get out for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I mean that's been one of the main thrusts of the conversations I've been having here today. In that, um, oh there we go. Sorry, I'm just uh, setting up here, guys. Uh, in terms of getting people out of the um, literal. And it, it is a common thing that I come across with everybody, and, and I know what it is. It's, it's, it's the program. And I've got to tell you, once you can see the program operating uh, from a completely neutral position, everything makes sense. And there, there is no way you can put this in, in perspective. There's just no way. Uh, you, have to, you just have to see it. So the best thing, and I've been talking about this a lot today, the best thing people can do is, is to start looking at their own roadmaps. And the roadmap begins with the point of entry. All right? If the birth certificate starts at that time, so does your game plan. And if you don't know where you're going or, or where you came from, how the hell do you know where you're going? And we have a lot of people... Uh, walking around on this planet without any roadmaps, and they're just going blindly through life, following along based on the system's rules and indoctrinations, uh, being good little slaves, and uh, throwing their hands up in the air, thinking they can't do anything about it, when in fact they're God, I know, because they're me. So this is why I am so glad to to be walking lockstep with you, because you bring that roadmap to people for them to see it. And... Once they can get a handle on it, this is for me the, the the zodiac was it wasn't the beginning of the yellow brick road as far as me seeing what my role was, but what that came in another way. But what it did was it confirmed everything and clarified it all. It made sense of it all, where everything made sense. And it's no wonder that the churches have spent so much time and all the systems of eliminating any concept of the holy science. Uh, especially in schools. I mean, uh, they certainly don't want anyone learning about themselves. So um, with that in mind, where do you want to go? Well, you mentioned the Zodiac. You know, we should start always with the Zodiac. Everything starts with the Zodiac. Everything starts beginning Virgo, and then they go around the ecliptic that way. And uh, they're trying to reclaim the Zodiac for Christianity. It's a bit like these... Um, Christian rock bands, you know, yeah, <laughs> they kind of make you. Yeah, sort of. Um, it's, it's oxymoronic, is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's it's vomitous. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a, that, yeah. I was trying to use a nice word. Uh, how about very pukey? Uh, yeah, it's all good. Vomitous works. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Uh, but um, the 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 point is. Because they can't run away from this science of the ecliptic that all Gospels are in the sky, and hence all their literature is written about this, what the ecliptic does, but they're too dumb to realise, of course. Uh, so what they're um, actually <clears throat> looking at is how the light works. Light always is ignited at Agnes. Aries. <laughs> uh, hmm. imagine, and, imagine that. <laughs> yeah, and then we have... And <laughs> Imagine that. It all makes sense, you see, because all the elements that follow... Um, Bonatti, the 13th century astrologer, was very clever. He always, he always started at Aries and then told a story. And everything he does, he starts at Aries and then tells the story, just as much, just exactly as his 
pretty much namesake Bonacci today does. <laughs> hmm, interesting about that. And how about Bill Donna Huey? <laughs> <laughs> what is it with you guys? You're all telling the same story, you know? It's it's friggin' awesome. <laughs> yeah. There's only one story. Yep. Oh, but, by the way, isn't Virgo the sixth sign? Yeah. Yeah, the hex. Okay, keep going. That's uh, just, you know, let's let's keep everybody analyzing. Let's start at the analyzing. The, screw the I am. Let's just get to analyzing. Yeah, huh? Yeah, okay. I get it. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um the the point the point I was trying to get at with Bonatti um, I'll I'll see if I can grab some beautiful parts from Bonatti because the guy is just rock and rolling the hottest astrologer ever and he was condemned by um, Dante tongue in cheek of course because Dante condemned um, the other Bon Boniface the Eighth the uh, Unum Sanctum Boniface. He condemned that Bon to uh, hell and his other contemporary uh, Bonatti, the astrologer, tongue-in-cheek because, of course, um, Dante wrote in other literature his um, appraisal of astrology because, of course, <laughs> if you're going to condemn <laughs> astrology, you're going to look like a dunce in history. <laughs> you know, you, you really will go down as just that, just a dunce, really. Um, so, so, but what he said was that... Um, Along the ecliptic is um, first is Aries, and then he says, "Why the bull? Um, isn't this strange that an Earth sign should turn up immediately after Aries when you would expect an air sign, since fire, air, water, Earth is the natural sequence of the vibration of all the elements? What is Earth doing as the second sign at um, two hours um, at one hour fifty nine minutes right ascension of meridian?" What is it doing right there after fire? Well, he, well, he says fire generates, uh, earth stabilizes. You see? Remember, we, we're talking about God here. Generation, operation, dissolution. Yeah, earth operates. It stabilizes things. Then comes air, and air degenerates, and then comes water, and water destroys. Hence, he said, it's perfect what the ecliptic is doing. It is generating, operating, and destroying in three or four phases, depending how you look at it. Whether you look at it in the modalities, 